Site planning is, is uh, one of the aspects of the of design that a lot of people don't say, see uh, the you know how it all comes together a lot of people know that there's a building on site but they forget that there is a plan that needs to come through in the planning of where that building is going to sit there's uh, the grading of the site the access to the site the parking to the site ADA Accessibility, Americans with Disability Act Accessibility, um, being able to uh, plan for uh, the removal of debris, be able to plan for uh, you know our, our, our trash trucks to come in and be able to remove the trash is very, very important, obviously. Um, being able to access your site so that you are able to move in and out of your site uh, with ease is very, very important. I mean, there's just so many aspects of it. The lighting of the site is important as well. Um, uh, then how are you going to make that site look good? Uh, are you going to be having landscaping in there? You need to be able to plan that out. How is the site lit? It's important at nighttime, obviously, so that you can be uh, able to access the site safely. Um, uh, there is so much uh, that is necessary to be able to plan a site correctly. Uh, and that is why uh, a true professional needs to be considered and used in, in the proper uh, design of that site. Uh, in, in our case here at Development One, you know, we provide site planning in all our projects. It is very, very important to be able to do that so that the building is sitting properly on the site with all of the amenities that I just talked about, but also in relation to sun exposure, access, prevailing winds, uh, shadows, shading, uh, parking, as I mentioned earlier. There's just so many aspects of the site that are very, very important to be able to consider. What are some common mistakes of site planning? <clears throat> you know, some of the things that we see is, uh, some of it is pretty basic, not enough parking stalls. Some of it is not considering the disabled in designing your site. The proper parking for the disabled. Uh, access to the building from the parking lot. Providing the proper sidewalk so that people can walk to your site you know they sometimes they're not considered having the wrong grade where it's hard to go from your parking spot to access the building and perhaps there are a lot of obstructions along the way like curves and sidewalks and uh, drains perhaps that are along the path of travel you know those are very critical obviously especially where elderly occupy are going to be used at the the site. Um, those are some of the pro some of the mistakes that that occur if if the site planning is not done correctly. To be a good site planner, obviously you need the experience, and that experience is not only about having the proper amount of parking spots or uh, perhaps knowing on how the building is going to be sitting on the site, but also you need to know the codes of the cities in zoning laws that are required, how to work with the cities to be able to understand what their requirements are and how to be able to implement them uh, in your project so that not only do they meet the requirements from the city, but also will provide a very good design. You know, it is a fine balance between the two because there are some codes that uh, are very difficult to implement. Um, but um, the codes exist there for the benefit of the end user. Um, it, they want to make sure that these laws are implemented through design so that in the end, everybody, every user of the facility is able to benefit. So there are uh, many aspects of the experience required by a site planner. Uh, 
you know, experience with the cities, experience with the codes, experience uh, through design, uh, experience uh, through um, the uh, actual requirements of that site, um, experience with understanding how the built environment works when you're placing your building on that site. Everything from shadow, shading, uh, prevailing winds, uh, sun exposure, light exposure, all of that is very, very important to be able to understand and to be able to practice and learn and be able to, to be educated properly in the proper way of designing a site plan. When you design a site plan, uh, it is very, very important to be able to understand all the codes and be able to implement them up front. And if they're not implemented up front, there could be the possibility of change orders while construction is going on. Um, and those mistakes, that inexperience, will uh, develop into cost overruns, uh, expenses that the client was not expecting, and uh, of course, put more money into the contractor's pocket. I mean, I'm all in favor of people making money, but not at the expense of the mistakes of a site planner or not using a proper site planner. I think that that is very, very important. Here at Developments One, change order prevention is very, very important. Uh, we believe we owe it to the client to be able to have documents that are very well, uh, show a, a design very well thought out that are going to actually prevent change orders. We do not want the city to come in and say, hey, you missed this code or you missed this zoning law or you missed this setback and it's going to cost you to change your design during construction. So we make sure that we have the knowledge to be able to design properly.